Hey, welcome to Lucky Finds Part 1, and thank you for stopping by. You know, I read a lot about exceptional finds, um, some for, for, for tuities, just, um that folks make at yard sales, thrift stores, and even in trash beside the, the street. And lately, there's been a lot of gold coin finds down in Florida. Over the years, I've made a few interesting finds of my own, but nothing that would add up to what a gold coin would be, but interesting nonetheless. A few years back, my son David and I went to, to a thrift store in Bay City, Michigan. I found a large oil painting of the Lord Jesus in a rather elaborate frame. I would have liked to keep it, but as it is uh, usually the case in my life, I was need of, in need of money. Anyway, the oil paint was checked with age, and, and the frame was assembled with square-cut nails. I doubted <clears throat> that I could fi afford uh, what they were asking for the, for the piece, but incredibly, when I found the price tag on it, it was $1.99. That's right. It was large and a very nicely done piece, and at that price, David and I scooped it up right away. That same day, we went to another thrift store here in Saginaw, Michigan. I made right for the books as I had uh, made some nice finds at that particular store of the past. That is when a truly odd, almost enigmatic thing happened. I came across a book of art. It was uh, it was old, very uh, uh, very brittle in 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 papers, and it looked like a a tome that perhaps had some worth to it. And as I was thumbing through uh, th this particular book, there was a photograph of the exact same painting we had just bought in Bay City. There was no doubt, mine was the original. The uh, painting had been uh, done in 1882, though I could not remember the artist's name. At that time, I had really a uh, lucrative eBay business going. Well, when we returned home uh, to Lincoln, Michigan again, uh, that night I quickly photographed the oil painting and listed it for sale, hoping it would bring a really good price but regretting that I needed to sell the piece at all. The bids were mediocre at best, that is, until the last day. And the last few hours, the price shot up from $15 to our to over $800 for a $1.99 item. I was happy. <laughs> that is the highest amount I have ever sold online for a single item. And I don't know what happened to the book, but I, I may have sold that also. But a few years later... At the same thrift store in Saginaw, I made another what I feel was spectacular find, and it was only, and it only cost me nine ninety nine, but it was pretty um, tough to get it home. It was winter, and I didn't have a car, and was using a bicycle, not a motorized bike, but a bicycle pedal. <laughs> it was difficult to, a difficult ride on the way home, but uh, going home was much 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 worse. My purchase that day, a beautiful set of German encyclopedias consisting of 25 heavy books. And the cashier bagged them for me <clears throat> in this little, in the little, little cloth bags like you can buy when you're going grocery shopping. Well, sir, I got them all on my bike. Four bags of uh, the uh, handlebars and a large box perched pressed serapulously on the bike seat. <clears throat> With this load, I trudged on home walking the bike and uh, balancing it. I weighed the uh, load when I got home, and it was in excess of 90 pounds. <clears throat> the awesome thing was that each volume had 10 or more full-color engravings or lithographs in it, and it, uh, the artwork was beautifully executed. And when I got them home, I began carefully removing the, the lithographs and photographs, as well as many steel engravings. These were in total well over 500 pages, which I listed um, over a period of time on eBay. I sold out over the next 12 months. The highest a single page sold for was $49.99, and the lowest was $4.99. Needless to say, I cleaned up nicely for the effort I put in. I also sold about 50 antique maps from the, uh, these German encyclopedias at anywhere from $9.99 to $29.99 apiece. Years ago now, I taught Sunday school and children's church at First Baptist Church in Bridgeport, Michigan. I loved working with the kids. I was also pleased uh, with being a part of... Uh, the ministry of Pastor R.B. Ouellette. I remember one Sunday going to a nearby party store to get a Diet Coke. On the way, uh, on the way there, I spotted a wooden box lying beside the road, so I stopped to investigate. What I found was something awesome. I never dreamed of coming across something like this. In it were six reels of 35mm silent movies, which I was later to identify 
as having been produced between 1915 and 1920. This kind of film is very unstable, and with a nitrate base, it could easily catch fire, producing uh, and the fire producing a white hot flame. The film was uh, also uh, degrading very easily, as uh, actually smells like dirty socks when uh, when it's you know de degrading. I was uh, offended. Um, or I was off offered a handsome sum of money for the films, but decided uh, that I'd do something different. After shooting stills of each individual frame, I donated the film to the American Film Institute for preservation. They are currently housed in the uh, housed there under the group title of the Dennis Morrison Film Collection. The films from that early era are rare at best, so rather than taking money, I settled for a, a bit of prestige. If you happen across any of these wonderful old silent movies, hey, don't uh, don't pass them by. Pick them up, store them safely, and they can either be sold on eBay or donated for posterity. Thanks for stopping by. It's fun talking to you about this. Have a great day.